Sasquatch! Sasquatch, wait! Please! I need to talk to you! I know you're here! Why won't you come out? she just leave like that, Drake? She just left this on the porch and ran. How do you know it was her? This was the first game we played together. Plus there's the lingering smell of Sasquatch fur on the porch. I'd recognize it anywhere. Oh, good. I thought our neighbors were composting their yard with roadkill. <sighs> what does it all mean? Maybe it's some kind of a message. Could be. Maybe she's requesting that this be the next game we review. To the gaming table! Wanna be a fun guy? <sighs> then grab yourself a buddy and pull up a round of morals. Morals? So what is this, like a morality game? Like shoots and ladders? No, actually. Morals with an E. It's a type of mushroom, apparently. Kinda weird they name the whole game after just one when there's so many types to collect. Morals is a basic set collecting game about harvesting wild mushrooms as you take a stroll through the forest. Collect enough mushrooms of the same type and you can cook them up for points. And at the end of the game, the player with the most points is the winner. This is the basic game setup. Here you've got your forest made up of eight cards. These two cards in the end are the easy pickings right at your feet. The closer to the draw pile, the deeper you are in the forest. These mushrooms on the end are also the closest to decay. Each turn, the mushroom that's on the end gets added to the decay pile. Once the decay pile reaches four cards, you sweep it and start a new one, rather than adding a fifth card. On your turn, you can perform one of the following actions. You can take a card from the forest by taking one of the two closest for free, or by paying one stick token for each card deeper in the forest. If you have an empty pan, you can cook mushrooms, or you could trade mushrooms for sticks, or you can take the decay pile so long as it doesn't exceed your maximum hand size. You can't take some of the pile, it's all or nothing. If you want, you can spend your whole turn playing down a single frying pan. It's usually a good idea if you're trying to make room in your hand or you're stalling for time. You can cook three or more mushrooms to earn points. They must be the same type. And you need to cook each set in its own pan. There's also butter and cider cards, which give you an extra bonus if you have a large number of the same mushroom. This is harder than it looks. With a starting max hand size of eight, getting the six cards required to play a cider is quite a feat. Just multiply the point value of each mushroom by the number of mushrooms you've got and add in any bonuses to get the value of each pan. Alternatively, you can use the foraging value found beneath the cooking value. Sell two or more like mushrooms for foraging sticks, which can allow you to go deeper into the forest. So what's up with these sticks anyways? What are they supposed to represent in real life? Yeah, at first I thought they were hiking sticks, but the fact that you pay more than one rules that out. I mean, what, did you wear your first stick down to the nub? It's also got this fork on the end. Kind of looks like Tiny Tim's crutch from A Christmas Carol. Maybe it's a dowsing rod. Oh, check this out. According to this, the sticks represent insider tips from the locals to help you forage better. Oh, hmm. Anyway... There are also night cards. Sometimes in the forest, instead of a regular mushroom, you'll find one of these. If you pick up a moon card, it's like finding a golden ticket. Look everyone, look, I've got it! The big golden ticket is mine! Good for you, Charlie! You can now trade in your moon card for a draw from the night deck. Each card in the night deck is effectively worth two mushrooms instead of one, which is nice for your limited hand size. But you have no idea what you're going to get, so it may end up just adding to the clutter. The game comes with a card that has the count of each varietal on it, so you'll know how many are in the deck, useful for counting cards. 
Generally speaking, the more valuable the mushroom, the more rare it is. The most valuable fungus in the game is the titular moral. Huh. Why are morals the most valuable mushroom? I've never heard of them. Good call. The only expensive mushrooms I've ever heard of is truffles, and that's not even included in this game. Do truffles even taste good? I don't know. Rich people seem to like them, but then again, rich people are known for liking caviar and foie gras. Well, you know, we should try tasting it. See what all the fuss is about. I want to try them too, but it's not like regular grocery stores carry them. I mean, aren't truffles really hard to find? That's right. You need truffle hogs to sniff them out. And I know just where to find some. According to my research, female pigs are natural truffle seekers. There's a chemical compound in truffles that smells just like the sex pheromones of a male pig. Huh. Okay, so we need a sow then. Hey ladies, hey pigs. Can I get you excited about some truffles? Truffles. They're mushrooms that smell like sexy boy pigs. That's exciting, right? Come on, let's go foraging. Get up. Let's go. Hmm. They don't look very interested. Nah. Man, these girls are too well fed. They're not motivated. I know. Let's ask the all-knowing nightmare pig of the Black Hills. But he's untamable. I'm just going to ask him a few questions. You're forgetting. I'm a trained cryptozoologist. Legendary creatures are kind of my specialty. But no one's met the all-knowing nightmare pig and live. Oh, don't worry about the details so much. Drake learned to improvise. I have totally got this covered. Well, that could have gone better. I still say it was a miscommunication. The Nightmare Pig kept using words I don't know. Just sounded like a whole lot of profanity to me. I still say things were going pretty well. Until he tried to kill us. Well, waste not, want not. We had to subdue the Nightmare Pig. But at least his head will serve as a powerful talisman to ward away evil spirits. <laughs> So, where did we leave off? Hand management. It's crucial for victory. Your starting hand size is 8, which sounds pretty good, but it fills up fast. And every card you don't need becomes a liability. That's why you'll want baskets to increase your hand size by 2 apiece. Pick up one of these, and it goes down on the table instead of into your hand. Picking up baskets is a tempting choice, but it can be tough when you're deciding between that and the rare specimen of mushroom you've been waiting for. But skip over too many baskets and your opponent might end up with a hand size much bigger than yours, which can be a huge disadvantage in the long run. Another danger in the forest is the destroying angel. If you pick up one of these toxic mushroom cards, it doesn't go into your hand, but instead it enters your system. This causes you to discard down to four cards plus two per basket. Normally this is something you'd want to avoid. However, it's a good way of discarding cards from your hand that you no longer want. You can't voluntarily discard in morals. So, what is the Destroying Angel anyway? Is that a real mushroom? Hmm. According to the manual, the Destroying Angel, as its name implies, is the mushroom equivalent of a fire-laced weapon of the ancients. It is fear and wrath, organically woven. Wow. I don't think the name implied any of that. We must not be very cultured. <laughs> I use inorganic methods when I weave fear and wrath. So, what do we think of this game? Well, the goal of the game publisher Two Lanterns was to create a game that could be learned in under 15 minutes and played in under 45, and on that count, success. My biggest complaint is that maintaining the forest cards is kind of a pain. Every turn, at least one card decays, and you've got to scooch all the cards along to make room for the next one. It's not terrible, but doing this every turn gets pretty old. The instructions for morals describe it as a light strategy game, and that sounds just about right. The theme is one of casually strolling through the woods, so the gameplay is pretty laid back. That being said, every game as I can see the draw pile dwindling and I realize how few turns I've got to pull it all together, it gets my pulse racing every time. Mm -hmm. 
for me, it's the sort of game where I immediately want a rematch after the first game. It's definitely worth owning. It's a perfect way to spend a few hours on a rainy afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah